Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. We are going to be having a ton of fun tonight as we throw it back to some worship music and some sermons from the old pastime. It's Throwback Thursday, people, which means tonight we're taking it way back. And tonight is all about connecting with one another and having fun. So speaking of throwback worship songs, we want to know what your favorites were, okay? So, like, How Great Is Our God, or Holy Is The Lord, Mighty To Save, Mighty To Save. Mighty to save. Let us know in the comments below. Type them out. Uh, what is your favorite old school throwback Thursday worship song? Type it in the comments. We want to know what you're feeling we right now. Know. We want you to be interacting with one another this whole night. And so get those fingers ready. Type away. We want to hear from you. Now, in addition to the songs that we're going to be throwing back, we're also throwing it back to the sermons. And, you know, uh, one of my favorite things about sermons is the sermon, sermon bumpers. Sermon bumpers. Sermon bumpers are a lot of fun. And we have a lot of fun here at the church. And one of my favorites. John's favorite. Is from the Jonah series. You guys remember that one? Do you remember that one? The big whale kind of sounded like Dory. Do your best Dory impression. <laughs> Check yeah. out John's favorite bumper. We're going to have you vote between John's and mine, but you need to see John's first, so check this out. See, it is one of the best sermon bumpers we've ever had here. The very end is valid, the most epic, valid. right? Just a huge bass, literally people being woken up from Shook the fall. The yeah, seriously, Shook the, the bay doors. It's yes. so much fun. Yes. All right, now That's go ahead, your give them That's your favorite. your favorite, okay? My favorite came from the Relatable series with the sweet oh, song yeah. by our boy Lecrae. Very okay? good. Okay, check this out. Oh, I need a chair. In my time zone when my mind's gone and I'm flying home and I'm stressed out and I'm tempted to get that style phone and go pull it up but you know what's up and you know that ain't gonna solve nothing I mean Lord forbid I might follow something and I'm all another cuz to hold me down like bitch straps to the sight ward it's killing me but you still with me when I fight hard and you digging me when I'm eating you deal with me when my car's pulled could have dealt with me but you fell for me before I fell for you keep me on that right path and the right math is you plus nothing's everything you my everything same Ain't gotta question my allegiance Cause the way you love me, I can never leave I need you By my side, thick and thin Highs and lows, don't let go that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one too. You know, you kind of you start feeling the vibe, you start feeling the the rhythm. It makes you want to dance. Yeah, you know? it's, it's it's so. Let us know in the comments below. Did you like the Jonah one or did you like the relatable? You can click bumper? John or Kiki, and we want to see who wins. Okay, John or Kiki, pick me, pick me. We all know. Just let us know in the comments win. wherever you are on Facebook, Instagram, uh, on uh, where else? We YouTube, YouTube, Church Online. Just everybody's type it watching. In. Type it in. We want to know. Okay. While you're doing that, we're going to get started with some worship, some of our favorite songs from the last decade. Check this out.
Hey, that was so fun to sing those songs. We're throwing it back. You know, Mighty Save is one of my all-time favorites. It is a song that takes me back to when I was in high school and just thinking about how mighty God was to save me in the midst of my sin, in the midst of my brokenness. And I love singing these songs today. God uses music in such a powerful way. We remember it. It means stuff to us. So as you're listening and as you're experiencing tonight's Throwback Thursday service, drop a comment. Where were you at when you were hearing Mighty to Save and worshiping God with those lyrics? 
We want to know how God has worked in your life and is still working in your life today. You know, God is the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he uh, worked in your life back then. He is working in your life now. He's going to work in your life in the future. And uh, through Spring Hills, we've been doing a lot of great things. God has been doing a lot of great things. And, uh, you know, one of the cool things that he's been doing is he's been bringing him, bringing people to himself. Uh, 57 people over the last three weeks alone have come to Christ. Can you believe that? That's awesome. Like, that's amazing. Numbers are everything to us because numbers represent people. And we love people because God loves people. And so praise God. If you're one of those people that have said yes to Jesus in the last three weeks, we are so excited and celebrating with you. In fact, you're getting a Bible in the mail. Uh, many of you have already gotten yours. And if you haven't gotten one and you need a Bible, this is yours. We want to give this Bible to you. This has your name on it. So let us know in the comments or email us. It would be info at springhills.org. It would be a great way to connect with us. And if you want a Bible, this one is for you. All right, this next song that we're gonna sing is called Victor's Crown, and then we're throwing it back to 2013. It's one of my favorite songs. It's a good one. Speaks so much about the power of God. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. He wears the victor's crown, and he will overcome. So let this song minister to you where you're at tonight.
Throwback Thursday. So excited that we can have this time together. Now, I uh, you're going to get to hear an old sermon by me. It's not actually that old. A couple years ago during our series, you asked for it. And tonight we're going to talk about how to handle stress. Anybody stressed out? Anyway, the reason we're choosing that, I chose that sermon for throwbacks because we all need it. Now, you'll see I'm a little heavier than I am now. But hey, the good news is I'm in better shape now. So no judgment. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, uh, enjoy it. Make some comments and let's interact. The last Easter, we took a survey of 2,000 of you and asked, what would you want talked about at church if you could choose anything? And we picked the top four things uh, from your, the survey. And so the month of January, we're going to go through them. And today we're going to talk about stress. Anybody stressed out here today? <clears throat> yeah, okay. One honest person. You know, it is a big group to share, and I realize that. Uh, I'm Brett, pastor of the church, and I'm excited to talk to you about stress. Stress isn't going away, everybody. Uh, we've got to find some way of dealing with it. Uh, I read a survey that said that, uh, a legitimate survey, 44% of the people said that their lives are more stressed out today than they were five years ago. And that's true, obviously. I mean, we know that. Uh, There are different uh, generations, you know, the older, mature generation, as they're called, the baby boomers and uh, the millennials, 18 to 33. Do you know which generation is stressed out the most in our culture? It is the millennials, okay? They're the most stressed out. Um, So there's a lot of reason for that. Uh, You know, technology stresses us out, and they're really into that as we... We're all kind of into it, but they're really into it. I mean, I live by it. And so it's, it's picking up, increasing the speed of our lives like crazy. Women are more stressed out than men. Not sure why that is. Some of the ladies are like, yeah, I like him to be a little more stressed out, you know, than he is. But women generally are more stressed out than men are. But it's not, uh, it's not going away. So I want to encourage you with some scripture today. Along the lines of this question, how do I deal with my stress? The Bible says this. Jesus actually told his followers, 
I have told you all this so that you may have, I love this word, peace in me. It's where peace always is, everybody. It's in a relationship with God. That's where the peace comes from. Peace in me. Here on earth you will have many, notice, many, underline it, many, not just some, many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. This is a great verse. I encourage you to memorize this. Number one, I mean, it just, there is no life without stress. Jesus said it. You know, one of the, one of the, the teaching that drives me crazy when I watch some sermons online, and I, that's sort of my hobby is to watch other pastors and critique them. <laughs> uh, we're getting really good at it, you know. <clears throat> Nobody watches my stuff, so they don't critique me. But anyway, we've dismantled all the comment section. Uh, but I like to critique them, and one of the things that drives me crazy is the teaching that you know, you become a Christian and you get your breakthrough and then it's like you move up to this next level somewhere. There's a lot of that teaching which people get kind of sucked into because it's like, if I follow this and if I come here and I listen to you teach me enough, then I'm going to get a breakthrough and I like go from here to here. And it's like, you know, and now I'm doing all this crazy cool stuff and my life's all powerful and I'm amazing because I came here and got a breakthrough. There is, that's false teaching, everybody. That is not Christianity. It's nowhere in the scriptures. It sells, though. I mean, it sells, believe me. Jesus said in this, on the earth, you're going to have many trials and sorrows. Many trials. Now, God is there to take you through them. He doesn't take you out of them. Sorrows. People that we love that have died and that we care about. And loss. Sorrows. There's trials. Trials at work. Trials at home. Trials, you know... With money, by the way, money and work are the two top, the top two, when it comes to what stresses you, according to the survey. Money, everybody's worried about money all the time. You know, too much month at the end of the money. Uh, <laughs> and then work, of course. You know, the job, my new job stresses me, and then people say my old job stresses me. I mean, it's like we're just, you know. On it goes. So I have told you this so that you may have peace in me. It's like Jesus is saying, I've got this. I've, I understand. And I'm, I came to, to usher in through his death and resurrection. A new heaven and a new earth being prepared now. But on this earth, it's a fight. And your spiritual growth is not just an instantaneous breakthrough. It is a walk with God, a daily obedience, a long obedience in the same direction in him. That's where the peace comes from. So how do I deal with my stress? I'm going to give you three things. Take them right out of Scripture. All this, Every question we get, I'm going to just take it right out of Scripture. I want you to hear from God. Okay, That's my hope. Hear from God in response to these questions. Because <clears throat> when you go online and you ask the question, how do I deal with my stress, you get things like, well, you need to breathe, you know? And I'm like, okay. You know, some of this can help. Some of you are like great at this. You're like, I love that. And it's like, ooh, you know. Uh, so you got to breathe and you got to center. You got to be centered. And I'm like, centered on what? You know, you got to meditate. Meditate on what? Um, but a lot of that thing, get a good night's sleep and try yoga, you know. I went to one yoga class. That was it, man. I couldn't get out of the position I couldn't get into. So... <laughs> I'll give you three things here, three things from God's Word. All right, uh, number one, humble yourself before God. All right, if you're taking notes, there's notes in the back uh, where you come in. Uh, fill, here's your fill-in. Humble yourself. God will exalt you at the proper time. Let me explain what we mean by that. Here's the verse, 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you. Now let's look at this verse together. Humble yourself under the what kind of hand of God? Mighty. What's that saying about God? He's, he's sovereign God. He's omnipotent. He can, he can do things in your life. He can do things in other people's lives. It's a mighty hand of God. And when you do that, when you humble yourself, what's the result? So that at the what? Proper time. There's a timing for things. There's a right time and there's not a, a wrong, there's a wrong time. 
He may exalt you. What are we saying about stress here? We're saying a lot of stress is people striving for things. Wouldn't you agree? Striving, worrying about things. Taking control of their lives like their, their, their unitis, you know, holding up the world on their shoulders. We're striving. We're going to make sure we have enough money. We're going to make sure that we take care of business and all that. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but I am saying this. Worrying about it and stressing about it is not what God's plan is for you. you I'm not saying have no plans, you know. Okay, have a plan. Don't worry about it. Okay, humble yourself under God. I mean, God, He is the one who can make things happen. That's what it says. He'll exalt you, you see? He'll do it. Some of you like to, you know, you like to move into, into positions of greater responsibility, perhaps at a job or within a ministry, or you'd like to see some things change, and you want to, you want to move up, just to put it that way. And so you're all anxious about it, and you, you're striving, you're pushing, it's creating conflict, you can't sleep at night, you're all worried about this person and that person and this situation and them and how will it all work. You're also, listen, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. At the right time, He will do it. That's what it says. He will do it. So you, you trust Him. It doesn't mean you don't work. It doesn't mean you don't try. It doesn't mean you don't learn. No, no. It just means you do all that without worry because you know God's the one in His time who will, who will do it. And you trust Him for that. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. What does it mean to humble yourself? People have a lot of misunderstanding about that. You know, it's like, be humble. Okay, I don't want to be humble. I mean, out in the world, it's, it's, it's not this. It's not. This is from the Scripture. This is God's Word here, which says He'll do it. Trust Him. But out in the world, it's assert yourself, right? It's assert yourself. It's get out front. It's be confident in the interview. When they ask you in the interview, you know, what are your weaknesses? Tell them, oh, I just, I work too much, you know? Right? I'm a perfectionist and I work too hard. But never, never reveal what your weakness is about. So in Scripture, it's the opposite of that. I like what C.S. Lewis talks about humility. He says, great definition here. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. I would put it this way. Think about God and His abilities, His power, his mighty hand. Think about that more than you think about yourself, and stress will go down. I mean, you're so stressed about having enough, you know. Like I said, I mean, money is a big source for people's stress and all that. Having enough. Can God in his mighty provision provide for you? Can he? Does he care? Of course he does. Um, so many different sources of stress in my, in my uh, research uh, I mentioned a couple, money, work, that kind of thing, relationships, technology, a new job. Uh, too many choices in our culture creates a lot of stress for us. You know that? It used to be, I mean, when I was a kid, we played in the dirt. That was it. Little trucks, and then the dirt. That's it. All day. Big. T <laughs> now, like, you know, kids have all these choices of video games and things to do. We, not, we need to kick them out. Just go get in the dirt, man. Just That's all we did. And then restaurants, you know, uh, we would, we would uh, go to McDonald's or we get pizza. That's it. Now you can get 30, 30 restaurants within a mile, just like that. You've got to make all these choices. That's why I have to confess, uh, for me, I hate to shop, all right? I just hate to shop. Yeah, I'm good for a half hour, and then I'm like, okay. My wife and I did go shopping the other night, okay? We went shopping. She's so patient with me. Oh, But we went shopping. And I just, after half an hour, I was like, oh, man, you know, too many, too many things to look at. Just too many. I want to get a coffee pot. Ours is still fine, but it's like, okay, you know, I want that feeling of buying something, right? <laughs> <laughs> coffee pot. So I go over this one. I'm looking at it. It's got the chrome, you know? You know what I'm talking about, the chrome. And I, I look at the price, I'm like, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. I'm not going to buy that. So I go over to these over here, no chrome, all right? No fancy stuff, gr no grinders, none of that. And I'm looking at it, look at the price. This is so cheap. Who wants something? 
You know? So then finally, I said, forget it. We're not going to buy anything. I'm just going to, I'm going to grind mine into the ground. No pun intended. All right. So our coffee maker still gets fine. Again, not as much chrome as you like, but it's fine. All right. So we have to, with all these, with all these crazy, all these stressors, we need to humble ourselves and say, God will provide. God will give power. God will exalt me and lift me up at the right time because he knows the right time. He hasn't, he hasn't, it's not like he hasn't heard your cry. He's heard it, but he loves you and there's a right time for things. All right? Humility, uh, C.S. Lewis says, if a man thinks he's not conceited, he is very conceited indeed. All right? Indeed. So when I humble myself, that's what I'm doing. I'm trusting in God. I, my wife, um, whom I love, we met in a band. Okay? I don't know how you met your wife, but we, we met in a band. She's a bass player. She's a good bass player. She sings. And, uh, and I'm a drummer, and so uh, we have a mutual friend. My wife and her two sisters had a trio, right? And they would do Sheraton Hotel gigs and wedding gigs and, and stuff, <clears throat> and even did a lot of church stuff, too. But they were looking for a Christian drummer, and we had a mutual friend, and they suggested me, so I went over to the house for a rehearsal and audition, and I got in the band, Okay. <laughs> Little did I know what God was really doing in that, because I fell in love with the bass player. I just fell in love with her. And um, I mean, so in love with her, and I, I, hadn't, I hadn't, you know, finished school yet. I didn't know what I was going to do and all this kind of thing. But I remember I, the first time I asked her to marry me, you know, was pretty early on. <laughs> first time. Yeah, no, there were three times. I asked her to marry me three times. <laughs> first time. She said, ah, nah, uh, uh, not the proper time, okay? I did it a second time, asked her, ah, third time's a charm. But I had, she said, yes, I, but we, uh, I had so much anxiety through all that. You know, it's like, I love you, and I want to and there were circumstances, and we couldn't get married, and it wasn't the right time, but I was, I was all, all tied up inside. And the thing that helped me was just, I, I would say to God, God, just in your time. And if this is meant to be, and I've actually counseled the people this way, single adults, if this is meant to be, God will make it happen. You, you, he will do it. He loves you. You know, you can't get all ahead of him, which we always try to do. So the humility part is Lord, I trust your purposes in my life. That's the humble part. I want your purposes in my life. And as part of our stress is we don't know why we're living. We don't know the purpose of our life. If we knew the purpose of our life, we would know what to say no to and what to say yes to. But because we don't know the purpose of our life, we get all stressed out just trying to please everybody. Everybody has a plan for your life. Right? I mean, just saying no. It's hard. How many times did you, did you say yes this week when you meant to say no? We do it all the time. When you know your purpose and you're humbly under, under God's purposes for your life and you're trusting Him to move you into places at His time, He does it. And it's exciting to see. I mean, it's like, wow, God, you really work. Now, we mentioned growth track. The first one is today. We'll have the second next week. We do it every month. Growth track, the reason we have growth track is to help you to discover God's purpose for your life. And when you discover God's purpose for your life, you can make an impact with your life. And not only that, but you know what to say no to. Who are you living for, you know? I mean, really, you're living for Him. You know Him. You've humbled yourself. You know what your purpose is, and you align yourself to that, and God blesses your life, and God enriches your life. So if you haven't gone through growth track, go through growth track and say to God through the whole thing, tell me, Lord, what is, what is my life, you know? What is the purpose for my life? Humble yourself. God will exalt you at the proper time. And then the Scripture says, cast your cares upon the Lord. Cast your cares on the Lord. This is what the verse says in 5-7. Casting how many of your cares? All of them, right? Casting all your cares on Him. Why? Why should you do that? Because He cares for you. Now, that's an that's a encouraging 
piece of scripture, huh? Casting all of them, all of them. You say, can't I keep the top five back for myself to worry about? No, all, all of them. God does not want you to live in stress mode, worry mode, anxious care mode. You know why? Because when you're like that, you are a bear to live with when you're like that. You just are. I mean, you're, you're frustrated all the time. You're getting more critical all the time because you're trying to, you're trying to carry the world. You're trying to do too much. You're not even sure what, what you're supposed to do. What, and, and then you just are isolating more. You're drinking more. Trying to relieve the pain in your life. You're, you're escaping more. And listen, this is not a good picture here. And, and if we don't do something, then, you know, there's the fallout of all that. Cast your cares upon the Lord, he says, because he cares for you. And when you know that God cares for you, then obviously you're willing to cast your cares on him. Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 6, which would be a great cross-reference for you in your Bible. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, look, don't worry about your life, what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat. Don't worry about your life. He says, uh, look at the birds. Uh, God takes care of the birds, right? I mean, look at them. I don't see any starving birds with signs out front of our church here. Looking, you know, I'm in there, right? They're just, they're happy. They're singing. They're getting their food. I mean, they're not lazy, but, but they're not stressed. Not on medication, okay? They're not taking sleeping pills. Which, by the way, I mean, sleeping pills, the sales of sleeping pills just going through the roof. People can't sleep anymore. You know? I mean, God's going to be up all night. Why don't you just go to bed and cast your cares on Him? But the birds, the birds don't worry about anything. Why not? They have a Heavenly Father that feeds them. They trust Him. Jesus says, look at them. And then Jesus gives the kicker. You're more important to God than birds. Okay? Make sense? If he takes care of them, you're more, he's going to take care of you. Stop worrying about your future and about, I mean, plan, but don't worry. Don't be about your future. Some of us are so caught up. We're so busy worrying about the future, we can't enjoy the moment with our great God and worship. We can't, we're always preparing, preparing to live and never living. I mean, it's crazy. <clears throat> Um, cast all of them. Anxieties here, the Greek word in the original language from which this is translated means to be carried about in all kinds of directions. It's like you go from feeling, being whole to being split apart. That's anxiety, okay? Pulled here and there. Um, preoccupied, occupying a, a space before you get there. Just, you can't focus anymore. Uh, you, you, can't, you can't think anymore. You can't read anymore. It's hard for you to even to, you know, have a great conversation because you're, you're so preoccupied. And then you, you get a phone call and you get a text. I mean, technology is making it that way. I got an I got a Apple Watch here. And I got, a, I got a text during like the last message, you know, a text. And I'm like, I'm trying to preach the Word of God here. And I'm getting texts, stupid texts from, you know, like your rents, your, your bills are due. You know, something like that. Casting all. I know, I need to. You know, you can turn it off. You can turn it off. I realize that now. But what if somebody needs me? You know what I mean? They need me. And I know that my calling in life is to meet everybody's needs. Is that it? Jesus said no to a lot of people, by the way. Reread the Gospels. He said no to a lot of people because it wasn't the Father's will. Cast all of them because he cares for you. Love this verse out of Philippians. Don't worry, here it is, about anything. Really? Are you serious, God? Are you serious? That's what the Bible, don't worry about anything. I mean, do you have a heavenly father who loves you or not? Do you have a heavenly father that's, promise to provide for you. Jesus said it this way, seek first, here's the key, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his right, everything will be added to you. I love that promise. 
And, and, G, and here the Apostle Paul, don't worry about anything but pray and ask God for everything you need. And then that, always giving thanks. I mean, you know you're stressed when you stop giving thanks, right? You just don't, you don't, you're just, I don't have anything to thank, I don't thank, I'm not thankful for anything. Always giving thanks, which is an expression of trust in God. But what do you, this says, what do you need? Ask God for it. You know, cast your care, another way of saying it. Cast your cares on Him. He cares for you. What do you need? You need a new car? Do you? I mean, you need a new car? Tell the Lord about it. Don't stress. Tell Him about it. I mean, then, you know, check out CarMax or we got any car dealers here. Go to theirs. They're Christians. They'll give you a deal. I know that. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, you know, don't, don't misunderstand when I say don't worry. It doesn't mean you don't do anything, but you do it without worrying like the birds, all right? You need a car, ask God. You need a different job. It's driving you crazy. You know, humble yourself under God. Say, Lord, I, I'm in this job. I don't like it. I'm, I, I really would like a change, but I'm trusting you. You'll, you'll move me at the right time, the proper time. I'm, give me wisdom about that, God. Ask him for a job change. Watch him work in your life. Be patient on him. You know, some of us make prayer requests, and then we give God like a half a day, and then we take it back, you know. <laughs> like, you don't want to do that. Uh, you want to you take this verse to heart here. In everything, you, with everything you need. Always thank, thank God. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do through this situation as I'm seeking your wisdom and I'm waiting on you at the proper time. I'm just, thank you, God, what you've already done in my life. I mean, just your grace through Jesus Christ and the death for my sins is beyond imagine. If you never gave me anything beyond that, I'm thankful for you forever. I mean, you cultivate thankfulness in your life. Uh, the Apostle Paul who wrote these words, wrote them from a Roman prison. Okay? He was in prison. And rejoice always, he says. Rejoice always, giving thanks, praising God. As an act of trust, he's working things out in your life. Cast your cares on the Lord. Now that's, to me, that's the big picture. That's how you answer stress in your life. All right? I mean, you, you can do techniques. All right? You can try the techniques. That's fine. Uh, it just never gets to, it's just not, it's not strong enough. You know, I mean, I can deep breathe and I can, I can focus and, and look at something, concentrate, whatever. But I mean, it's got to go deeper. What do you need? You need a God in heaven who you know that loves you and cares about you and has a mighty hand and you know his faithfulness and his goodness and you take every anxious thought and care and you bring it to him in prayer and you leave it with him and you see him answer you and your trust in him grows and you become less and less worried because he always provides, he's always faithful and you're convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that he loves you. There it is. There it is. I mean, that's, that's the answer to stress. It's him. You know, our daughter, uh, Angelique, Kiki, she, uh, when she was young, she was not a good a good napper. She didn't want to go to sleep at night. Anybody have one of those? Oh, my goodness. Our second child, Josh, our son, went right to bed. He was like, great, you want to go to bed? Yeah, can we go to bed? Oh, you know, he go to bed. He's like, wow, you want to take a nap? Yeah. Oh, well, nah, <laughs> Kiki, our first, oh, my word, never, never. And so at night, she'd cry, you know. You put her in, we'd have a great time. And then, you, you know, you put him in the crib, and then she'd start crying, right? And then, you know, you're supposed to let him cry for how long, depending on what book you read, right? Let him cry. Well, Kiki, you're not, you're not going to win. I mean, you're, you know, I mean, I don't know how long. I'd have to ask Eve if we ever went with our daughter. I mean, probably five minutes, ten minutes. But she's still in there. She wants out. She wants to be with us. And so this is what I would do. I'd go, and I'm, I met kind of a softy here. Some of you parents, I'm not giving parental information now. I'm just sharing my heart with you. Okay. <laughs> I would go into a room, and I, if I put my hand through the slats of the crib, you know, if I put my hand through here, she'd take my hand, and she'd go right to sleep. Just like that. It's like, I just need, it's like, I need to know somebody cares, you know. I need to know everything's okay. So I hold her hand, and then she's, fast asleep, and then I would, 
you know. As soon as I get about here, she's... <laughs> so there are many nights, I mean, you, I'm on the ground, asleep with my hand through the slats. But she is a healthy, emotional young woman today because of the sacrifice of my wife <laughs> and I. All right, last thing here. Be watchful. Now, this is, this is something that uh, is so important, and you're not going to read this when you go online, how to deal with stress. You won't read this, is, but you need to see this. This is what he says. He says, be sober-minded, be watchful. Why? Why should I do that? Because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. You, there is an invisible war against you, everybody. It's the devil. And you say, well, I can't see him. And, and people have images of pitchforks and all that. All right. Well, when you read the scripture, he, is, he was created to be a, a high-ranking angel. The scripture says he became filled with pride, led a rebellion against God. A third of the angels, a third of them, fell with the devil. And there's been a battle before creation began between God and him. Okay? He's a roaring lion. You're the creation of God, so if he can destroy you, he likes that. The devil, if he can destroy churches, he likes that. Uh, if he can keep people from hearing the good news of Jesus Christ, he loves that. I mean, there's, there is an invisible war. The scripture says that your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in heavenly places, against the strategies and schemes of the devil. That's the real battle. We think, oh, no, it's, it's my neighbor. You know, it's the politicians. That's the real battle. You know, no, it's not. You know, it, it, the real battle is an invisible war. Watch for it. Be sober-minded. That is, I mean, you know, be serious about it. Okay? He's roaring. He's roaring. He roars all kinds of things. He's roaring, you know, you don't measure up to God. God won't provide for you. Roaring! The future's in your hands, baby, all by yourself. Don't believe that stuff. You know, what a roar, roar. You need this. You need that. You're supposed to do this. You've got to measure up to that. You know, he's roar. Roar. And he wants to devour. He's not a kitten. Here's the great thing, though, the Scripture says. When you have Christ in you, when you have a relationship with God, Scripture says this, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the devil himself has been defeated at the cross. He was defeated. Death was defeated through Jesus' cross and resurrection. Death, sin, atoned for, were free, forgiven. He's creating a new heaven and a new earth. God is and will come again to get us. The devil's been defeated. Some ways he's a he's a toothless lion. I like what one writer said. Randy Alcorn said, "Satan is a lion, yes, but a lion on God's leash." It's good. What is he trying to do? I mean, why a verse like this? What is he What is he trying to do? Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. One of the things he's doing is trying to make you so busy that you don't have time to pray. You don't have time to worship. You don't have time to focus on God. Be watchful. The devil's trying to destroy your life. He's trying to get you burning it at both ends, you know, which isn't too bright. Huh. I mean, you got so many irons in the fire, you can't keep any of them hot, particularly your relationship to God. The devil wants to increase the speed of our lives. So we're so fragmented, so distracted that temptations become all the more tempting to us to just escape, to have an affair, to contact an old girlfriend, to start doing drugs, to drink more. I mean, this is to devour you. Literally, to swallow you is that Greek word, to devour. To swallow you. So what am I saying? I'm just saying, be watchful for that. You know, the, the average person now comes to church once a month. You know? Why is that? Not because they don't like church. Well, because when it comes time to go to church to worship God, hear the scriptures, connect, when it comes time, they're like, 
honey, we're just so what? Exhausted. Isn't that true? We're so busy. We've got so much going on in our life, you know. And the very thing you need to hear from God, to be assured of your purpose, to live for Him, to let Him move you into places of greater responsibility, the very thing you need is to be with others, hearing His Word, and we cut that out. The devil is bus busyness. That's what the devil is. That's what he does. So, hey, you want to be involved? We're like, I'd love to be involved in the life of the church in a small group. I would love to do that. I know I need that. I need communication. I need People's stress level goes down when they're in community, by the way. It just goes down. I would love that, but we're so busy. Doing what? Doing what? I don't know. Just stupid stuff. For who? I don't even know. For who? I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I mean, it's like God's going to give you peace in your life. He's going to give you peace. But you, you've got to place yourself in those, in those places where he can speak to you and you can be part of a community and, and you can live for him and stop living for everybody else. That's killing you. And stop living for everything else. Anyways. He loves you. He cares for you. He cares for you. Let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you for your care for us and love for us. And what an invitation to cast all of it on you. Because you can handle it. You're mighty God. Listen, where you, as we're in prayer here, where you sit, identify what you're anxious about. What is it? And would you just cast that onto the Lord, just sort of once for all, just say, Lord, you care for me. Here it is. You'll exalt me at the right time. You're got, you have a mighty hand. You'll take care of it. God, I, you'll provide for me. You'll take care of me. I'm more valuable to you than birds. And so I trust you, Lord. And if you're here today and you've not yet come into a relationship with the living God, I would invite you right where you sit to say, Lord Jesus, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. I want to know your forgiveness in my life. I fall short, your grace, power. Thank you for dying for me. You're coming again. And Lord, I pray that our community here will grow and that the evil one, the devourer, the lion won't allow us to just be pulled in a million directions, but we'll be pulled in one towards you. And our lives will come together because of it. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
stand against our God, absolutely nothing. Tonight has been so incredible. Did you like it? We want to know. I loved it. It was so much fun. Drop a comment if you think we should do Throwback Thursday again. I think we should. This was fun. I'm with you on that. Now, in addition to knowing that info, we want to let you know about some more uh, exciting news. Big news. Are you ready for it? Huge news. Drum roll. Get ready. Drum roll from your couch with us, okay? Big news. Adventure Week 2020 is online. online. And we're so excited about it. Tell us. We are so excited. In all seriousness, you guys, Adventure Week is one of our biggest outreach to kids in our community every year. And we are so excited for the possibility bringing it online into your home this June. Registration opens tonight, tonight. at midnight. So if you have kids four years old through sixth grade, get them signed up. What's the theme? The theme this year is going to be Operation time machine it's going to be so much fun you don't want to miss it so epic don't miss that and also don't miss church online this weekend pastor brett is concluding uh our series hope in uncertain times with great. part three and we can't wait and so we'll see you this weekend for church we love you guys have a great night